Hello everyone, uh, this is Tom, Tom Worth Jr. And we're here to talk about Trump and college football, uh, basically tribalism. Um, as you'll notice, I'm wearing an, an ill-fitting uh, SMU hat. I think possibly the only free thing we got in four years at SMU. Um, they got a lot of money, but uh, they could always use some more apparently, uh, like most colleges. Um, and here I got my Michigan mug. Of course, uh, this, by the way, all started with me making the offhand comment yesterday about uh, college football and, and rooting and all the various allegiances and my burnt orange watch band, of course. Um, and just for fun, I threw on the, uh, oh, my dog's, uh, my daughter's dog hair, he's visiting. Got the Longhorn shoes, the Stanford socks. Um, so, uh, I'm all branded out. And um, these things can elicit reactions in people. It, it's simple branding, right? Um, if, if you're Go Blue or Hook 'em or Pony Up, uh, whatever, that's awesome. If you are Ohio State, <laughs> or take your pick, OU, a and uh, any other college, really. Um, if you are uh, against these schools, then, you know, that's going to make you feel a different way. Um, and and that's, that's just called being a human being. Um, we've always done that. We've always, you know... Uh, found ways to to fit in with each other to quickly assess that hey you're one of us awesome or hey you're one of them uh we're gonna kill you um whatever it might be uh when it comes to college football um it it's fun it's it's cool it's I and mean, it's enjoyable um yes i might really dislike uh ou football uh, or Ohio State football, or Alabama football, and yeah, they're rivals, but but I dislike them in a way that I don't dislike, say, uh, A&M football. Um, and, and I know A&M football very much dislikes uh, Texas football. Um, and I think that has to do with success. Um, I, I didn't care about Alabama when they used to lose. Um, you know, before Nick Saban, basically. But once they started winning all the time, uh, including against us in a national championship game almost 20 years ago, I, I very much started hating them. Uh, same with Ohio State. Um, you know, Penn State's fine. They're a good football team. Uh, they don't beat Michigan very often. Um, so, so I don't dislike them. A&M, and m they, they didn't win championships uh, like OU. Uh, OU, you know, I hate OU, <laughs> but, but it's all in the context of football. Living in Texas, you know people, you know a lot of Aggies, you know a lot of Sooners, um, you know a lot of Longhorns, and you're friends with them. They might be family, friends, people you grew up with, whatever they are, they're still uh, co-workers. Um, you recognize them as fellow human beings, fellow college football fans. Um, it's just that uh, you root against them. Um, when it comes to uh, politics, uh, Kamala Harris last night had, uh, I didn't see the whole speech. I, I saw, I don't know, maybe the a middle five minutes or so, but she had a line in there about uh, Trump being an unserious man or an unserious person. Uh, and I think that's basically his entire appeal to to his people is he, he comes across as this guy that does his goofy little dances and his um, smart alecky uh, comments and just, just things that a thoughtful person uh, wouldn't necessarily do in the context of uh, being the most powerful person in the world. Um, his press conferences 
about COVID um, going off on tangents about, well, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do this, maybe we should drink this, maybe we should inject that. It, it's just all the people that love him would think, most of them would think, ha, that's funny. Uh, most other people would be um, horrified by that because we know that there are people who will take what he says seriously and act on it. And that's a real problem when you are the president of the United States of America. Um, it, it is the difference between uh, the fun kind of tribalism, which is uh, a brand loyalty or an identification of, you know, you got someone who goes to SMU, that might tell you something about that person, or at least you think it does. Um, I can assure you it would have told you nothing about uh, our family having a daughter that went to SMU. I, I don't feel like we were the, the typical SMU family going into it. However, all the friends she made, all the people she met, all the, the, the friends and parents we met because we had the luxury of being 45 minutes away from her. So we got to meet and really get to know a lot of these people over four years. Um, they're just people. And that's the way it is wherever you are, wherever you went. Um, we're all just people. Uh, but in, in something as uh, consequential as the Oval Office, um, you have to be able to take things seriously. Uh, more importantly, you have to be able to act outside of yourself. Uh, so this is a key difference of the tribalism in the college football thing that I was mentioning. Um, it has some similarities in that we can identify with, you know, birds of a feather flocking together. But we also recognize that we're all part of something together. And, and Trump is not. Uh, he is in a, a, a tribe of one. And if you want to be a part of his tribe, great go be a part of his tribe. His, his tribe has one king. It is him. Uh, the purpose of the tribe is to glorify that king and to uh, enable that king and defend that king uh, in, the, in the face of all reality. Um, that is a key difference uh, between uh, the Trump uh, cult of personality type tribe and the, the college football or normal tribal behavior that we're used to. Um, just my thoughts on this. Uh, I'm still going to have fun with college football and we'll delve deeply into uh, kind of the, oh, well, heck, let's just get into it right now. Uh, I saw a comment by one of the, the funny guys on uh, oh, uh, the, com the old Comedy Central show, The Daily Show. Uh, with John Stewart, it wasn't John Stewart. It was the guy who would go around with uh, a video crew to Trump rallies a few years ago and just kind of mock them and make fun of them. And uh, more recently, he was talking to one of them, and and when faced with, "Hey, what would you think about a guy that did or thought these things?" and the Trump supporters would be, "Oh, that'd be terrible," and then he would say, "Well, actually, that's not what." so-and-so did. That's actually what Trump did, and here's the evidence, and they, they would be stupefied. Um, and, and you could do that on both sides. But a telling comment was when one of them was faced with the big reveal that it was actually something Trump said, and he said, what's your reaction to that? And the person just sat there and thought about it for a second, and then they just said, I don't care. <laughs> and that is... That's a, that is what tells us that none of this has anything to do with what Trump says or what Trump does or what Trump thinks or, or thought yesterday but thinks something different right now. They don't care. Uh, it is about Trump. Uh, that's why it's the Trump movement. It's not the Republican movement. It's not a new political force that's going to carry on after uh, he steps down. It's going to be, or, or, or gets defeated again. Um, he's been defeated 
with the midterms in 2018 and then the presidential in 2020 and the midterms in 2022. Hopefully now that'll be four in a row going back to the one he won. That's, that's an 80% loss rate. Um, hopefully that has an effect at some point on his movement, but what it won't have an effect on are the people who love him and they don't care. They, they, they just don't care about, anything he says or does. Um, they like the guy. And then I, again, I don't get it. I'm, I'm not a, uh, a cult follower type. Um, obviously we would tease, uh, our a and friends about a and being a cult. Um, but when you're in it, you, you love it and it's, it's important to you and it makes sense in some way. Um, but if, if, if you're on the outside, it's just, it's just weird and different and you don't get it. Um, and I think that's what we are faced with, uh, um, with Trump supporters. And there, there's really nothing we can do about it. The unfortunate thing is there, there are so, so many of them. And it's been shocking how many there are. I think that surprised him. It surprised his team, you know, going back to 2015 and then into the end of 2016 when the election actually happened. Just the shock on the dude's face that he actually won, nobody knew there were that many people who who just don't care. They just wanted this guy in office. And and what we found over four years is there's there's more of them and they were emboldened to come out and uh and and organize and uh rally together and become a force unto itself. No matter how many people went to jail, no matter how many people were convicted, no matter how many people were impeached, um, it, it didn't matter. Um, so, so that's what we're faced with. Uh, it, it's not a case of explaining to people something they don't know. That is what we're faced with with these people uh, who, who will support a person in the face of uh, all evidence that they should not support the person. Um, when the person is more important than, than their thoughts or, or their actions or their words, uh, in the political arena, that, that's just a, that's just a recipe for a disaster. We've seen it throughout history. No need to invoke the evil, scary names. We all know who we're talking about. Uh, it happens again. It's what makes us human beings just as much as, as a hat or or a shirt or a mug go blue um it, it it's just what we are so we have to get through it we have to be a um, little discouraged that there are so many uh here in the united states in the year 2024 but there are and they all have their own reasons um as misguided as they may be or you know, maybe they actually have legitimate uh, reasons that are based in fact and logic and uh, they have a single issue just like so many people do. And he's the only one that speaks to that that issue. Those, those millions of people are out there too. And I guess, you know, I'm not, not I guess, that is fine. Um, we all have what's important to us. Um, but the the more millions are the people that that just, they don't understand uh, what he's really trying to do here with democracy. And that's my problem. It is not policy. It is not Republican or Democrat or progressive or liberal or conservative. It's none of that. It is, there is one guy who, if you are a white supremacist, that's your guy. Does that mean everyone who supports him is a white supremacist? No, but there's one guy. Uh, there is one guy who, if you fear all immigrants, anyone from a foreign country ever moving to this country again, uh, that's your one guy. <laughs> um, it's, it, it is the, and they are, there's all these little, uh, niche, uh, destructive fears. Um, and if you have any of them, you've got one guy and it's Trump. Um, that, that's that's a problem because I don't care who you are, myself included, there's something I irrationally fear. 
Um, and I may think I'm right on everything, including those things that I fear. But if the thing I fear the most, because I watch Fox TV all day, uh, is a bunch of homeless, poor uh, people from Central America uh, trying to come into the United States, circumventing the legal process. Um, if I watch Fox News all day, that's probably one of my biggest fears. Uh, as someone who lives in Texas and has lived here since 1978, um, I, I'm sorry, I don't fear that. Um, and I, I, <laughs> I just don't. Um, and also, I don't watch Fox News. So um, I think that is... Okay, let's get into that another day, too. Um, how much of this would even exist without Fox News? I, I don't think much. I think it'd be their niche conspiracy sites, your Alex Jones, your whoever it is, all the people trying to start their own little YouTube news networks. That's fine. They're on all sides. Um, your anti-vaxxers, whatever it may be. But without Fox News, Megaphone, all day, every day, just not only filling people's head with this nonsense, but keeping them from actually consuming any factual information or getting the whole story or both sides of the story. Um, I see some of this. My parents are huge Fox News people. They always have been. We go down uh, and visit them at the lake for family gatherings, birthdays, anniversaries, summer stuff. And and they'll inevitably... Uh, my mom will inevitably show us awesome stuff on Fox News and gosh, this isn't political and aren't they so likable and they just are talking sense here and I don't see what the problem with this and, and you're watching it and your mouth is agape and you, you can't believe that not only are they watching this stuff all day every day, um, but that they actually think there's nothing uh, wrong with it, that they think is totally normal. Um, and my dad can kind of read the room and realize nobody has any interest and he'll he'll want to turn it off. Um, I don't fault them for watching that. I mean, I wouldn't do it myself. I, I, I just, I'm a more optimistic, positive person. And there's so much joy and fun in the world uh, between tech and sports and, and what have you. I, I wouldn't choose to uh, be riven with fear all day, every day of my life. Um, but but a lot of people do, and if you are one of those people, then Fox News is is there for you. Um, so I don't know what comes after Trump. Um, I don't know who they'll dig up next. But uh, you know, it goes back to Rush Limbaugh um, and uh, Newt Gingrich, and that's that's a whole other story. But yeah, just want to talk some college football tribalism and Trumpism, uh, compare and contrast, and hopefully this has uh, stirred a thought or two in you, and I'm sure you've had uh, similar thoughts yourself, and I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but it's fun for me, so I'm going to continue preaching. See y'all later.